Um, all right. Uh, I just did these problems. Okay. With uh, your neighbor down the street. Oh, okay. Uh, Dylan? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah let's see. All right. Um, trying to figure out if I'd rather use a copy that has no writing on it. Mm -hmm. um, you, it looks like you've done all, all of these. Yeah, I just need to help on one and four. That's why I just sent you the picture of that, because just to show that I just need help on one and four. But okay. I mean, like, You're good on everything else? Yeah, I'm good on everything else. I just had questions on one and four and then the proof. One, there's, okay, cool. One, there is a theorem that references an exterior angle of a triangle to the two inside angles that it's not next to. Mm -hmm. What is true about this exterior angle and these two angles here? They're going to be equal. It's equal to the sum of those two. Yeah. 98 degrees. Mm-hmm. And the reason, this might help remember it a little bit, is that this angle here is supplementary to that angle right there. Correct? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is there a linear pair? Well, um, yeah. this angle right here also is supplementary to the sum of these two angles. Mm -hmm. So since they're, that angle is supplementary to both that and the sum of those two, well, then that means this must be equal to the sum of those two. Yeah. And the theorem that you want to cite is the alternate exterior angle theorem. Okay. I don't know what its number is. Um, That's fine. Yeah. Understand these numbers are not universal. That's specific to your book only. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you go to a different geometry class that uses a different book, that's not called theorem 8.5. Yeah. Okay. This theorem here may have a number, but I would never use it because it, it, it's really only in your book that it's called that. What it's called okay. is the exterior angle theorem. Okay. Okay. All right. Number four. What are we looking at? What kind of figure is four? Uh, trapezoid. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, and what is this line here called? The mid-segment. Okay. What does the mid-segment do in a trapezoid? It's half of the two parallel lines. Well, it, it bisects the two non-parallel lines. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. In other words, it bisects this into two equal parts. Uh -huh. And it bisects that into two equal parts. Okay. That's what, that's what makes it a mid-segment. All, all, right. all mid-segments of trapezoids do that. Now, there's one other thing that it does. And let me see if I can... If you're memorizing the area of a trapezoid, what is it? Do you know? 360? No, the area. Uh oh, I don't know the area. <laughs> the area of a rectangle. Um, I don't think we've learned the area yet. Well, you have for area of a rectangle. Oh, maybe not, but area of a rectangle is base times height. Okay? Okay. If I got a rectangle that's 7 and 4, the area is 28. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Well, the way I remember the area of a trapezoid is it's the average base. Notice that in a trapezoid, there, by definition, there are only two opposite parallel sides. That's mm -hmm. that one, and that's that one. And that base is base one. That base is base two. And it's the same area as a rectangle, only it's the average base. So when I'm thinking of the area of a trapezoid, I'm thinking the average base times its vertical height. Its vertical height is always measured that way. How would we get the average base? Um, 
would you just do if, base time? Well, if B1 is the bottom base and B2 is the top base, what's the average base going to be? Um, those divided? The sum divided by 2. So there's your average base. Okay. So the area of a trapezoid is the average base times the height. It's just okay. like a rectangle, base times height, only there's two bases, so we need an average base. Well, guess what the average base is? It's the mid-segment. Okay. So what equation can I write here? It'd be 5x plus 3 plus 10x minus 9 over 2 equals 7x minus 1. You got it. Okay. Do we need to go through that algebra, or are you good to go from there? Nope, I'm good to go from there. I just was confused on the equation, but now I understand it. There is one thing about the algebra here that I, 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 had to, I didn't have to, but I, I, I wanted to point out to Dylan. Because uh -huh. let's make it a little 7x minus 1. Okay, so I have 7x minus 1 equals, and he, he did 1 half times everything. And now, how do I solve that equation? Um, What's the first thing you want to do? You want to combine like terms, so it would be 15x equal or minus, um, okay. yeah, minus it. Now what? And then you just um, find like half both of those, right? That's anyway. what you don't want to do, and, and that's why I wanted to talk about this. Um, notice 15x minus 6. You'll, you'll get the right answer that way. But notice, if I have to distribute this half, oh, I go to fractions immediately. I'm at 7 and a yeah. half x. I don't mm -hmm. want to do fractions, okay? Okay. When I'm solving equations, my goal is to always first get rid of the parentheses and then get rid of any denominators, okay? Denominators are what make them hard because they they're what introduces fractions, so what can I do to get rid of the denominator instantly? Um, make um, 15x and negative 6 a fraction. No. How about we multiply both sides by 2? Oh, by 2, yeah. Okay. So. In other words, I'm going to multiply the left side by 2, and I'm going to multiply the right side by 2. Now what's the left side become? Uh, 14x minus 2. What's the right side become? Uh, 30x minus 12. Oh, these twos cancel. That's why we multiplied by 2. Oh, so just only, be 15 x Yeah, the only reason we multiply by 2 is to get rid of that denominator. Okay. Okay. Interestingly enough, Dylan said the same answer, 30x. <laughs> so it's a common mistake. But what we're actually left with is just what, what and now I don't need the parentheses anymore. So I got yeah. rid of the denominator and the parentheses in one step. And I made the problem really easy. I'm going to take that 14x over to there. I'm going to take this 6 over to there. Boom. No fractions, nothing. Yeah, that makes sense. As opposed to if I distribute that half as my first step, Notice now I got a harder problem because now I got 7x minus 1 equals 7.5x minus 3. And now I got to deal with half an x. Yeah. I'll eventually solve it and get the right answer, x equal 4. It's just going to be tougher. Okay. okay. So when you have a choice whether to distribute a fraction to whatever's in the parentheses, or maybe get rid of the fraction instead by multiplying both sides by 2. It, in this problem, it's so much easier if you multiply both sides by 2. Okay. okay. That makes sense. And that's the only one on this page? 
Yeah, and then I just need help on the proof too, because I'm really confused. Okay, about let's that. look at the proof. I I know that one too. Um, oops, wrong page. I guess that's one advantage of having multiple people in the same geometry class. <laughs> but uh, I I get two shots at these if I have any problems with it the first time. All right, <laughs> what's statement one going to be? Um, PQRS is a square. EFG and H are midpoints of PQRS, and those are all given. Okay. What's our general strategy going to be to prove that this thing is here a square. is a square. Okay. How are we going to do that? What uh, two things are we going to have to prove? That all sides are equal and all angles are equal. All angles are 90 degrees and that yeah. all four sides are equal. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can prove all four sides are equal by looking at these triangles. If I can prove that triangle is congruent to that triangle is congruent to that triangle is congruent to that triangle, then all four hypotenuses are equal because CPCTC, congruent parts of congruent triangles are, or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that's going to be our goal is we're going to look at these four triangles here and try to prove they're congruent. So statement two. What can you say about PQ, QR, SR, and PS? Um, SR and PS, they're all congruent. Because? Um, because of the mid-segment divides. It's um, in the given statement, it said that it's a square. The it's just because it's a square. That's all you need. Okay. In other words, I'm talking about the four outside the four sides of the outside square. Mm -hmm. Those are equal to one another because it's a square. Okay, so that's statement two. PQ is equal to QR is equal to SR is equal to SP. Okay. Okay. Now, what can we say about PF, FQ, QG, GR, HR, H, S, S, E, and E, P. They're also all congruent. Why? Um, because of the midpoints. Right. In other words, because E, F, G, and H are midpoints, definition of midpoint is it bisects the line. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you want to use for a reason there, but you can probably just use that definition of midpoint. Yeah. Okay. Well, what do we know about angle P, Q, R, and S? Angle P, Q, the four they're angles. all equal. Okay. They're all equal to 90 degrees. Because? Um, it's the definition of a square. Okay. What do we know about this triangle right here? Well, um, let's, let's stop one minute. So we know that PE is equal to PF, is equal to FQ, is equal to QG, and we know each of these are 90 degree angles. Can I, is that enough information to say that triangle is congruent to that triangle is congruent to this and it's congruent to that? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is, because why? What's the reason? Um, because of Three. S. Is it SAS? Is it SAS? Is it AAS? What? It's SAS. Um, Correct. Side, angle, side. Put the three things that you know, go. Uh, this is always hard for me to describe exactly how you do this. I actually uh, told somebody wrong once that you go clockwise or counterclockwise. What you do is, here, let me, let me just draw something here. Okay. In other words, if, if I know that uh, 
In other words, why is this not side side angle? Um, that's what's hard to describe. <laughs> yeah, because side side angle isn't a. Well, no, it is. But I went the wrong way. Notice. Yeah. In other words, I went clockwise. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go counterclockwise. I wanted to go side angle side. Yeah. Now, what if I started there? Then I want to go clockwise. And it would still be side angle side. So you can't really say clockwise or counterclockwise. The explanation that I've come up with that's the best I can think of is you go in the shortest distance from one piece to the third piece. Okay. And that is this way. In other words, that's this way. Or if I'm starting here, then it's this way. Okay. Okay. But don't go the long way. Yeah, don't go In other go that. words, for me to get side, side, angle, I would have to go the long way instead of the short way. As long as you go the shortest way between your first and your third piece of information, then it doesn't matter which way you go. In other words, side, angle, side is the same as side, angle, side. Mm -hmm. Just always go the shortest possible route. Don't go the long way around. Okay. And hopefully that that makes sense to you. I, yeah, it does. I'm sure there must be a way they explain it in math class. I, I'm curious as to how they would do it because it's not that easy to explain mathematically. But yeah. anyway, so we now know that these four triangles are congruent. And not only are they congruent, but what kind of triangles are they? Um, right triangles. Right. What kind of triangles? PE is equal to PF. Um, so PE. They're isosceles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Now, what's true about an isosceles triangle? It doesn't two really have angles. two equal sides, but it has the opposite angles are equal also. Mm -hmm. So we know that angle PEF is equal to angle PFE. And mm -hmm. furthermore, we know what it is. When you have an isosceles right triangle, what are those two acute angles equal to? 45? Yeah, yeah. if yeah. that's 90 and these are equal, they have to both be 45. Okay. So okay. Now we know that one's 45. We know that one's 45. Well, I guess I can't call it a linear pair. If you have a linear pair of angles, they're always supplementary. But mm -hmm. you have three angles that make up that line. In other words, if I have three angles, one, two, and three, they're not a linear pair, but they are supplementary, right? Yeah. Okay, well, if this one's 45 and this one's 45, what's that have to be? 90. So angle E is 90. By the same reasoning, angle F, G, and H are each 90 because each of these are 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45. And now we have a four-sided figure that has four 90-degree angles and four equal sides. That's a square. Reason, definition of square. Okay. Sounds okay. Now, I don't know that I went through every single statement and every single reason. Oh, yeah, you don't have to, we don't have to fill up the whole proof. Okay, cool. In other words, you don't have to say the that angle is congruent to that angle, therefore the next statement would be the measurement of that angle is equal to the measurement of that angle. Why? Because yeah. congruent angles have the same measurements. You know, that's what I call going the extra yard when you're proving something. Yeah. As opposed to just saying that angle is equal to that angle. Yeah. And they're, they are equal. You can say they're equal because CPCT or uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And we've proven that all four of these are congruent. 
So that angle must equal that angle. But also, we know that's an isosceles right triangle. Two equal sides, two equal angles, right angle there, those have to be 45. So I think as long as you work through all of the logic that we discussed, you'll be fine on this. Okay. I hope. If your teacher wants more than that, then... I don't know. He said he doesn't want more than that. Cool. I would, I would say they're, they're doing a disservice if they want more than that. Yeah, he said at least four on our proofs, so... At least four statements? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the idea really on a proof isn't to be exact with your two-column proof. It's to understand how you're going to do it. Concept, mm -hmm. in other words, I, I think this would actually be a little better problem if they made you write a paragraph proof. You know, there's three kinds of proof. There's flow proofs, there's two-column proofs, and there's paragraph proofs. And in a paragraph yeah. proof is all you have to kind of do is say, okay, well, I'm going to prove that this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle are all congruent, and that they're all right isosceles triangles. Therefore, this side's equal to that side, equal to that side, equal to that side, 45, 45, each of these are 90, bingo, you're done. Okay. Makes sense. How are you uh, doing in the class? Uh, how do you like the um, teacher? I do not like the teacher at all. <laughs> okay. Same as at least one other student in the class that I know. Huh? Yeah. And the mother of that student hates the teacher. So um, sometimes that's just the luck of the draw, and you kind of have to Get, yeah, you have to deal with it. <laughs> you have to deal with it. And with math, it's not the hardest thing to deal with because math is math. And I don't care if you have a bad teacher or a good teacher. Uh, you can take him out of the equation. Truly. Yeah. You can. You have a book. The math principles are true and aren't going to change. So you can learn this just as effectively as if you had a good teacher. Uh, the only difference is a good teacher might make it a little easier. But there's no real reason to let a bad teacher keep you from learning math. That oh, yeah, for sure. a mistake. Might be different if it was history or uh, social sciences or something like that. Well, then a teacher can make a lot of difference because there aren't hard and fast rules, you know. But with math, mm -hmm. there are, uh, you, you know. And, and so the teacher, I don't think, is going to make as big a difference, a bad teacher, with math as they would with other subjects. Although I, I'd probably get yeah, disagreement yeah. with a lot of people with that because I, I tutor only math and uh, I get a lot of students that they just can't get by the fact that their teacher is so horrible. And then there's a lot of bad teachers out there. But like you said, you just have to deal with it. Yep. Sounds like you are if you yeah. got that other page done like you did. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got anything else you need to cover tonight or you want to just do a half hour session? Um, I think just a half hour is good. That, those are the only two problems on the review packets I had questions on as well. So. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, it sounds like you get it. So uh, you're done with quadrilaterals, I would imagine, aren't you? Yeah, I think so. After, I think this is like yeah, after kites and uh, trapezoids, you go on to something yeah. else. I'm not sure. What Moving on to like ratios and stuff. Well, he's skipping around the book quite a bit. Uh, I know he went from yeah. chapter three to chapter seven, and then back to chapter six. And I don't know if he's going to four next or what. But yeah, you'll find out, I guess, soon enough. Yep. <laughs> All right, Kristen. Well, you have a good one, and I will uh, talk to you next time. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. You're welcome.